and welcome to the Couple to Couple League podcast. Today's there guest is Colleen O'Rourke. Uh, can you mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about the update, the app? Update? Sure, sure. That's that's where my that's where my gift is now is the technical lead for the new Peak Day app and really getting to um, figure out how to transition from Cycle Pro Go to Peak Day. It's still using all the wonderful stuff that Cycle Pro Go has, but the look and feel of it is completely different. Much more updated, easy to use, intuitive. There's little info bubbles to help people, you know, if they're wondering what that is. There's so many things about it um, that are just going to be so much better um, and make it so much easier for women to be able to chart and to really visually see exactly what everything looks like. And they'll just be able to look at their phone and it's going to be just so much easier to know where am I in my cycle and what I'm doing and also encouraging uh, little messages for them to chart every day and different things that we can do that we haven't been able to do with the older app. Um, So still Cycle Pro Go, because I know a lot of people love Cycle Pro Go, so we don't want to say it's going away. It's just we're making it a lot better. We're improving it drastically, especially the way it looks and how you enter data It's just going to be a lot uh, smarter. How can the teaching couples utilize um, the information that their students are entering? Sure. One of the best things, especially for some of our couples are older, they still love their paper charts. We get that. You know, it's okay. It's all, you know, some people love the app. Some people, you know, want to use it or they don't have a smartphone. And in the past, it would always tie them together. And some of the teachers were so confused by that because they don't use it. So now it, it's going to be made so much easier for them to share with their teaching couple. They can email it, text it. Um, they were able to do that before, but it was a little it was a little harder to figure out. Now, when they're on their chart, they can just like you. If you have a smartphone, you can just look at it. and You have all those options. As soon as you hit share, it'll be like text, Facebook. You know, have all those things on the bottom to make it really easy to share their charts. And they can do multiple charts. So no matter what chart, if the teaching couple gets one chart and says, "I need to see your past charts," they can just send them quickly the last two charts um, so that they can really see the progression and, and what their normal is for them because every woman is different. So her cycle is going to look a little different than everyone else's. And so you can see what are their normal high temperatures, low temperatures, and things like that from their past charts. But it's really simple just to share it now. It's just a share button just like you have with everything. And then it just goes right to there and shares it with the teaching couple. And then the teaching couple can pull it right up on their phone, take a peek, and then text them, email them, call them, whatever works best for each teaching couple to communicate with their students. It is certainly good news. It, it, it mm-hmm. seems like it's going to be so, you know, engaging and fun to use and visually appealing. Yes. yes. I showed it to my daughter just to, because she's seen the old cycle program, because I showed it to her and tried to get her to use it. And she was like, oh, I don't, you know. And then I showed her this new, she was, first thing, I love those colors. First first thing out of her mouth, I love those. It made her happy to want to enter her her, her data. Mm-hmm. And she just loved the look of it. So but that's the hope is that even young women um, mm-hmm. can track. They'll have a whole tracking option of just tracking your chart, just tracking tracking basic things like temperature. Mm-hmm. And so you'll be able to do that and use it you know, for the period and different things like that for mm-hmm. young women um, to track. It did, so it's very um, exciting. So for single women to utilize mm-hmm. the app, is there, um, is there a, like a, a different kind of part of it that they would use or is it just yes basically- yeah it won't do the analysis so instead of figuring out phase one two three because as a single woman they don't need to really know that part that's not mm-hmm. what they're looking at they're mm-hmm. they're more looking at their periods are there you know different things with the period that they can mark on there um, so they're really tracking cycle length and things of that nature which are really nice that they can share and then they can easily share again their chart with a medical professional like a new area that's going to really show like six of your cycles together really quickly period length and what's going on how long your cycle was period and stuff like that to really help medical professionals to see if there is something that they want to look at if maybe something's happening with a young woman yeah that sounds very so helpful. that's another benefit right How did you learn about natural family planning? That's a great, that's a great question. Um, we were blessed to have a priest when we were getting married um, who really highly recommended we use natural family planning in our marriage. 
he knew our story and where we were, and he was a huge proponent. Um, he was in the Diocese of Arlington in Virginia, and he really um, he recommended it. And, of course, in my mind, I'm like, he's a single guy. He has no idea what he's talking about. He's not married. I had that typical mentality, I think, that a lot of um, our couples have, that how could this priest who's not married know what's best for my marriage? And um, so I didn't really listen to him until I went to a checkup. I was on a shot Depo-Provera, unfortunately. I had been convinced by my practitioner this was going to be great for me. And I took it, and I went for a checkup about three months before our wedding. And um, I had high blood pressure, and I was starting to st suffer from depression. I didn't know it. I asked, told him how I was feeling, and, and they immediately looked at me and said, those are big red flags, you can't take the shot anymore, but don't worry, you won't get pregnant for at least a year. And I was shocked. I had no idea what I was putting in my body, no idea that I now couldn't get pregnant for at least a year, if ever. Mm -hmm. And so it was really um, heartbreaking. So we got married, and when we came back, there was in our church, our priest would help pay, so they would augment the cost of the class. And it was like $25 to learn NFP. And so Tom and I went, and there were, oh, my gosh, at least 15 other couples. Um, the teaching couple was there. They had, unfortunately, their sitter had backed out, so they had, like, seven kids. So that was kind of like, whoa, that's a lot of kids, even though I'm in the middle of seven. But still, um, they were kind of running around. So we learned it for that class, and I went home and immediately started charting and loved it. Never looked back. Oh, that's amazing. So you started charting like right at the beginning of your marriage. Mm -hmm. And yes. how has that impacted your married life? Can you say that it had an impact on your married life? I actually will tell people I think it saved our marriage. Um, we, our first child, it took us, because of the Depo Provera and because of what it did to the lining of the uterus, we miscarried our first three children. So that alone was very, very difficult, um, but Tom was so supportive, and I think because of our communication and, you know, being open to life, you know, we were, he was just always there for me. And then when our first child was finally born, and that's another whole story because that was a healing that happened in uh, San Giovanni Rotundo at Padre Pio. He wasn't a saint then, his tomb back in 1998, actually. Um, but when we finally had Brian, he realized, we realized very quickly there was something different about him. And at the age of three, he was diagnosed with autism. And even though he was very high-functioning, very intelligent, there were a lot of behavioral issues. And what we discovered as we went through this process with our son, Brian, is that within five years of a diagnosis like that for a child, when they've had something severely wrong, um, the divorce rate is 85% within the first five years. And within 10 years, it's about 95%. So we're in this tiny 5%, and we would go to different functions and things, and it was always single parents, single dad, single mom, that were working with these kids with autism, especially like Brian, who had really severe behavior issues. And so we always, when we give our talk, we talk about how we truly believe that because we were using NFP and we were, we were the communication skills and all the love and the respect and the intimacy, the increase of intimacy in your marriage is unbelievable. We had one couple, I know I'm sorry if I go off track, but we had one couple when we were giving a talk to the engaged couples in the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, but to about 90 couples, so 180, um, come up to us afterward and was talking to us about NFP and said, it's like, you know, I live with my boyfriend and we don't ever talk, you know, it's like sex is nothing, but you guys are thinking about it every day because you're checking your signs and you know where you are. And she's like, that must just be amazing. And I never mm -hmm. thought about it in that sense, you know, but in her mind, it, it, she saw this intimacy. And we've even had, I was in Kroger one time just talking to Tom on the phone. It's about five years ago. And the lady said, oh, are you newly married? And I said, no, I've been married for, I've been married 20 years. And she's like, Oh, and you still talk to your husband that way? So just those little things, wow. I believe, that NFP yeah. just really fosters in your marriage. And that's why we tell all of our engaged couples, this is a better way to live your marriage. We're not trying to beat you up for the choices you've made prior to coming to class or what you're doing. But we're just trying to give you this better way to live your marriage. Beautiful. Oh, that is beautiful. That's amazing. Thank you. Does that lead somehow into why you and Tom became a teaching couple? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. It's amazing how God works. We actually, um, we got married in Virginia and I had this little town home that we had together. And then we were sent to Germany because I always thought it'd be fun to live in another country. Went back to Virginia and then I decided, we had talked about this even beforehand, that I would stay home once we had children. So we came back with Brian from Germany and quit EDS and ended up moving to Ohio. And so we went from having this group of friends that knew us one way, and then when we came to Ohio, it was like we had this whole new set. And it was interesting, all the couples that we kept meeting used natural family planning. And none of the couples in Virginia did, even though we shared the good news and they'd be like, no, you and Tom just get along great. It has nothing to do with NFP. We were trying to explain to them. Um, as we were starting to see more and more, I don't think we realized back in Virginia why we were different. It was when we came here and met other couples and they were similar to how we were as far as intimacy and the way they respected each other. Um, we just were drawn to them. These, and they'd been married, you know, 10, 20 years. And so we ended up meeting and lo and behold, one of them told our priest um, at the church at the time that, you know, they couldn't teach NFP. He wanted them to teach NFP, um, but that we could. And so he came to our house and we had Brian that was, you know, being diagnosed with autism. And then um, Michael was on the, I think Michael was a year. And we said, you know what? Yes, we, we did stuff apart. Um, he was in Knights of Columbus. I was super active in the mom's club, but we wanted to do something together a ministry together. And so we really looked at when we started teaching NFP as our date time. So once a month on a Sunday afternoon, we would teach this class and then our babysitter, which was usually parents or, you know, other CCL promoters or that would help us out their kids, their older kids. Um, we would have a little date time. So it just, it's been such a blessing, but it definitely using NFP, we wanted to share this once we figured out that, Oh my gosh, cause our other friends, some of them are getting divorced already. You know, we had just been married five years and we were seeing our friends divorce and have really a lot of trauma in their marriage already. And we realized we want to share this good news with other engaged couples. So how has the NFP or natural family planning landscape mm -hmm. changed recently? So, you know, when Tom and I started teaching 20 years ago, it was, it was very Catholic. You know, it was natural family planning and the church really recommended it. But now we're seeing in the past, gosh, five years, this huge explosion to what we call femtech, where women are realizing that they don't want to be on these drugs. They don't want to be on something that's, you know, hurting their body or, you know, um, impacting their cycles like I had, you know, that's causing these issues. And so many more women, so now they're, they're going to more fertility awareness-based methods. So you're seeing not even just the Christian community really picking up and really wanting to use FA, what we call FABM. So NFP is more of a Catholic term. Fertility aware, awareness-based methods is more of what you're going to hear from the medical community, what you're going to hear from the secular community, is they're really embracing these what we call FABMs and really wanting to learn more and more about what's going on, women who have struggled with infertility and they are they don't want to put all these drugs in them or use in vitro or do these things and then they char start charting and immediately a doctor can read and say, oh goodness, you have a luteal phase deficiency. You have this going on with your body. So we are seeing just this huge in the last five years increase of femtech and more of the secular community that want to understand. These women now realize, I want to understand my body and there are some just wonderful speakers out there that are in the secular world um, you know, a lot of them do have a you know Christian background, but many of several of them don't, and they are sharing this good news of how these fertility awareness based methods are so much healthier for you, help you to truly understand what's going on with your your body and why things are happening, and how you can naturally help your body, you know, become more fertile or achieve pregnancy or if there's deficiencies. And then the doctors now are coming on board. You have facts that's really getting the good word out to all the medical community about using FABMs and how they really, truly help um, women to understand what's happening with them. So I think that's one of the biggest changes I've seen since 20 years ago and 25 years ago since I've been married using NFP. Now when I mention it, more and more people, they know what it is. Before, mm -hmm. we always called it the best kept secret, and that's not so mm -hmm. true anymore. Yes. It's no longer the best kept secret. It's now becoming the norm, which is, what it, which is just, wow, what a gift. Well, thank you, okay. Colleen, for everything, uh, for spending time of with uh, me talking about natural family planning and Couple to Couple League. All right. Thank you very much. God All bless. right. God bless. Bye-bye.